In this video we're going to be talking about the main UIs in PBR Painter. I'm just going to give a very brief overview of the general features that are available, but I'm not going to go into any depth in terms of any of the technical details. So once you've installed and set up the add-on, and by the way there's a tutorial showing exactly how to do that, you will see something that looks like this. So on the right hand side we have access to the layers, and this is where you're going to be working with different layers to create your final material. So for example, we can create new layers. And then when we do that, we have access to all of the different properties of that layer, and that's all down in here. So for example, if I turn on a color and I can refresh the material, I can then change the color in that layer. And then you can just add more and more layers, and there's a bunch of different settings in here, which I'm not going to go into in this video, but this is the general purpose of this part of the UI. Now in terms of the different channels that are available, the main ones that you'll use are up in here and you can turn them on and off with these buttons. So for example, you can turn the metal on and you can also select the metal channel to view the UI in here. So there's different buttons that do different things. So I can turn that on and off, I can jump across and you kind of get a feel for how exactly that works. The other thing that you'll find in this interface is the other channels drop down. And this is basically where you have those channels that you don't really use that often, but that are very important in certain situations. So these are all of the other channels that go into a principled shader. So you can turn them on and then you get a brand new UI for all of these different individual ones. But most of the time you'll spend your time in this section, which is why there's this convenient little UI here to switch back and forth between these channels. All right, the other thing you'll see is the texture mapping drop down, and that's basically only going to be applicable when you have a texture imported into that channel. For example, if I change this base color to texture, as soon as I do that, even though I have nothing loaded, I get all these different options for mapping. So basically, if you put in a texture, you can choose how you want to map it, whether it's UV or box, and you can change things like the scale, the location, and the rotation of that texture. And that's all underneath this particular drop down here. Okay, so the final thing that's in this main UI is a deleted layers section. And basically what that is, is if you click delete, and then you choose to store the deleted layer, that will then appear in the deleted layers, so that later on, if you want, you can restore that and it will come back and put it back onto your model, exactly as it was before. By default, this is generally turned off, so you won't be storing your deleted layers by default, as we can see like that. All right, so if we jump across to the left-hand side, this is the basic brush settings for the add-on in here, and as you can see, they're kind of grayed out at the moment. That will become available as soon as you enter into texture paint mode. So for example, if I add a new layer and I now switch this to painted, which is basically built-in texture painting, as you can see, I now have access to this brush settings over here. And there's a bunch of different things in here that you can check out. So you can add textures and masks to your brush. You can change the stroke settings and you can also change the fall off settings. All of those different things come under this panel over here. All right, so another thing that you'll find in the UI is this baking tab over here. And that's underneath this same section here, but it's a brand new UI. This is going to give you everything that you need to do your baking. So once you finish making your model or you want to merge layers, anything like that, you switch across to the baking and you can do anything you want in here. Now I'm not going to go into any more depth with that other than to say that that's the general purpose of this panel. So the other things you'll see are down the bottom. This is exclusive to Blender 3. So if you're using an earlier version, then you won't see this, but basically this is the asset browser and this is basically where you can store all of your different assets. Now, I have a video explaining exactly how to set this up for PBR Painter so that you can kind of work on your materials, chuck them in the asset browser, and then bring them back in whenever you want to use them again. All right, now the final other main one that you'll see over here is just this image editor, and basically that's going to show up with whatever image that you're working on. So for example, right now we're working on this painted layer, so if I want to kind of paint something in, if I just refresh that, I can then paint on the model. And as you can see, it kind of shows up down here. Or you can paint in the image editor down here, and that will come up on the model. Okay, so outside of those panels around the outside, you then have these extra panels in here, which have even more features of the add-on. So the first one is just material slots, and basically that's just holding all of the different materials that you have assigned to your model, and you can either add or delete materials, you can swap them around, you can change the active material in each slot, everything you can do in here. 
Now you also have layer masks and basically these are just the masks for every single layer so depending on which layer you have selected you'll get a different mask in here and you can do so much stuff in here which is again something I'm not going to cover at all in this video. I do have dedicated tutorials for these so definitely check those out. Finally there is the layer ID map and basically an ID map is there to segment a model based on colors and once again more tutorials out there to cover that so just be aware that that's what that is and that's where you can find it and everything you need for the ID map is in there. Bear in mind there is a different ID map for every layer so as you select different layers you get different UIs in here. Alright, I think I'll leave it there. That's the basic overview of the UI. There's obviously way more detail that I could go into in all these different sections, but I'm not going to right now. Please do check out my other videos because I will be explaining everything in detail in those videos, and I'll also give lots of tutorials to kind of guide through how to use these different things. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something from it, and I hopefully will catch you in another video. Cheers.